Oh, that sound. Beautiful. The engine, it's really kicking in, Jimmy. Yeah, I'm loving my little bastard. Woohoo! On September 30th, 1955, actor James Dean was killed in a brutal two-vehicle accident near Paso Robles, California. In this episode, we're going to show you exactly how it happened. Even though James Dean starred in just three big movies, the 1950s youth looked up to him as an idol. His defiant look, messy hair, plain white t-shirt, this guy was effortlessly cool. One would never tell he's a dude from the 50s. Playing the rebel on the big screen and in real life, James Dean had a passion for sports cars and racing. On September 21st, 1955, he bought himself his dream car, Porsche Spider. Only five of those German masterpieces existed in the US at the time. It came powered by a 110 horsepower, 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine and did zero to 60 in under seven seconds. Not that exciting, huh? But for 1955, the car was savagely fast. Dean gave his new Porsche a nickname, Little Bastard. Before long, the Little Bastard started causing big problems. Two minor accidents in just one week. James clearly needed more time getting to know the vehicle prior to riding at full throttle in competitions, but his next race was rapidly approaching. Top drivers on coast are entering sports car races in Salinas Airport. Registration, inspection, and practice rides start on October 1st, and two 27-lap races will be held on October 2nd. Dean lived in Los Angeles. The race was in Salinas, right here, 300 miles up the coast. Normally, racers would put their sports cars on trailers and tow them to the event. Dean, though, decided that he could drive 300 miles behind the wheel of the little bastard to prepare himself and the car for the race weekend. At around 2 p.m. on Friday, September 30th, 1955, James Dean and his team filled up their gas tanks and took off for the race. A Porsche-certified mechanic, Rolf Wetherick, was accompanying James and the little bastard. Other teammates were following them in a station wagon towing an empty trailer. At 3.30 p.m., near Mettler, the caravan got pulled over by the California Highway Patrol. Both drivers got tickets for speeding. At 5 p.m., the team made a short stop at Blackwell's Corner right here. They met some other drivers, had refreshments, and from there they took off for their final destination. The plan was to regroup and have dinner in Paso Robles. The little bastard is cruising at around 60 miles an hour heading west on Route 466. Meanwhile, a big and bulky 1950 Ford Tudor is heading east. A 23-year-old Cal Poly student, Donald Turnipseed, is behind Ford's wheel. He needs to make a left turn on Route 41 at the junction. Turnip Seed slows down before the junction, checks for traffic, and starts the turn. And at that very moment, he notices a small car right in front of him. Is this guy gonna let us pass? Oh, shoot, hold on! Ah! Sidestep him, Jim! Ah! Dean tries sidestepping Turnip Seed. But with insufficient time and space, the two cars collide almost head on. So, how come Turnip Seed didn't see Dean earlier? Well, there were a few reasons. First and foremost, heading west on Route 466, Turnipseed was driving straight into the sun. It was 45 minutes till dawn, and the sun was already low on the horizon, creating a strong glare across the Ford's windshield. Turnipseed was squinting as it was hard to see what's happening ahead, especially small details. Speaking about the small details, Porsche Spider was unusually small compared to the cars of its era. Take a look. Here are some of the more normal 1950s vehicles like Chevrolet Bel Air, Packard 400, or Ford Tudor. See how tiny and low to the ground the Spider appears to be? The gray color of Dean's Porsche is one more thing that we need to point out. In the evening lighting, the gray aluminum body was almost blending with the grayish color of the asphalt. Add to that the fact that in the 50s, they didn't use headlights until it was completely dark outside. Looking through the windshield glare, Turnip Seed just didn't notice the ultra-rare, ultra-small, and ultra-low Porsche driving at the high rate of speed. Here's what he probably saw through the windshield. He approaches the junction, checks for traffic, starts the turn, notices the car, hits the brakes, then steers to the right to avoid the crash, 
but the collision was inevitable at that point. Donald Turnipseed and Rolf Wetherick would survive the accident. James Dean would die in the ambulance upon arrival at the hospital. He was 24 years old. Contrary to the popular belief, Dean wasn't speeding. He was moving fast, but he wasn't above the speed limit of 55 miles per hour. This fact was proved based on the wreckage and position of Dean's body. Just like Paul Walker, whose story we already reviewed, after his death, James Dean became a legend. His legacy lives till this day. This is the story of James Dean's death. This is how it was. Alright, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss new episodes.